The phantom slowly, gravely, silently approached. It was shrouded in a deep black garment which concealed its head, its face, its form, and left nothing of it visible save one outstretched hand. But for this, it would have been difficult to detach its figure from the night and separate it from the darkness by which it was surrounded. He felt that it was tall and stately when it came beside him, and that its mysterious presence filled him with a solemn dread. Am I in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? said Scrooge. The spirit answered not, but pointed onward with its hand. You are about to show me shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us, Scrooge pursued. Is that so, spirit? The upper portion of the garment was contracted for an instant in its folds, as if the spirit had inclined its head. That was the only answer that he received. The spirit stood amongst the graves and pointed down to one. Scrooge advanced towards it, trembling. He dreaded that he saw a new meaning in the phantom's solemn shape. Before I draw near to that stone to which you point, said Scrooge, answer me one question. Are these the shadows of the things that will be, or are they the shadows of things that may be only? Still, the ghost pointed downward to the grave by which it stood. Men's courses will foreshadow certain ends, but if the courses be departed from, the ends will change. Say it is thus with what you show me. The spirit was immovable as ever. Scrooge crept toward it, trembling as he went, and following the finger, read upon the stone of the neglected grave his own name, Ebenezer Scrooge. So it's been a while since my last video and much of that is because I had a rough year last year like many of you did as well and uh, really the only time I spent in my workshop was on things that absolutely had to get done. So this year I'm back into doing some of those projects that are fun to do and that's where this uh, diorama comes in. Now. In the interim, I've purchased some 3D printers. This is my Anycubic 3D printer and then my uh, wash and cure station. The resin printers are exceptional at detail. As you can see on the Pegasus in the lower, uh, let me see, lower left hand corner there, um, it's really, really high resolution. Some great detail comes out of these printers. And so I love them for my characters that I use in the uh, dioramas or in the book nooks. Uh, for larger projects, I also, um, let me pull this up. I also came up with a printer uh, that is uh, the Snapmaker. It's a three in one. It does 3D FDM printing, Plus, it also does laser etching as well as uh, CNC routing. So very versatile uh, machine. Uh, it's been absolutely a workhorse. Um, I'll have to show you at some point or another the, uh, the game that we built with it. Um, we bought, built a full-scale uh, three-dimensional Catan game with using the stamp maker and it was just a blast to build to paint and then to play i 3d printed a whole bunch of this build on the screen right now you can see the fireplace the chair the table uh, that i i downloaded those off of thingiverse for free 
The table, actually, I didn't end up using. I had to sculpt a table uh, out of Sculpey because I needed to run an LED through that. So here is the ghost of Christmas past, the candle. If you read the story and you see some of the iterations of A Christmas Carol, the ghost of Christmas past is represented by a candle. And there I have a flickering LED that is designed to look like a candle. Um, the table I printed out from Thingiverse, but didn't like how thin and flimsy it was. Plus it wouldn't hide the wiring very well. So I sculpted a set of legs for the table from uh, Sculpey, not its sponsor, and uh, then painted them up. So that's looking pretty good. But um, the, the, the focal point for this build is the characters. I didn't want to leave that to my lousy sculpting skills, so I went with 3D printed characters. Now here you can see the original concept art for the Ghost of Things to Come. I built this on my mini factory, which then was called Hero Forge, on my phone. I really liked him. But when I saw the Phantom from Loot, I said, ah, that, that is too cool to pass up. And this one looked a little bit more cartoonish, kind of like Scrooge did. But I didn't mind Scrooge looking cartoonish. I didn't necessarily want my ghost to look cartoonish. I wanted him to look like a ghost. The Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come is a 3D print that I got from Loot Studios. It's an STL file that's part of one of their packs. And... It was a phantom, I believe is what the name of it was. And there was two different phantoms. I like this one the best. And it just was highly detailed. Listen, if, you, if you're into 3D printing and you want very, very well done uh, STL files, they're not a sponsor here. So I'm just saying this because I, I purchased their products. They have highly detailed uh, STL files pre-supported that allows even the the most basic of beginners to immediately start printing out really fantastic prints and so this phantom was perfect for my ghost of Christmas yet to come as far as Scrooge goes I couldn't really find anything on loop prints that worked for Scrooge but I was lucky I have a little app on my phone called My Mini Factory. And in My Mini Factory, you can build your own STL files. Then download the STL file. I believe I spent about $8 on that. And then ran it out to my 3D printer and then painted him. Now, as far as my Scrooge goes, I wish I'd have known about mini paints prior to painting him. I used acrylic paints. He looks a little chalky as a result. If I would have used the mini paints, they have a much finer uh, grain to them and your paint ends up looking a little bit better. I was happy with the way it came out, so I just went, I went with it. So to start out the diorama, I started out with a foam base and uh, penciled in with a felt tip pen about where I wanted things. And the first thing I needed to start on was probably what was going to ultimately be the most difficult thing for me which was the weeping willow so you see here on a I have a circle drawn and I'm getting ready to make the weeping willow so I took the short piece of PVC I surrounded it with some aluminum foil made a uh, just a rough approximation of what my root system is going to look like then I surrounded the whole thing with painters tape making sure to make little wrinkles in the tape as it ran up and down the trunk. Now that's going to create, help you to create your bark. So once I got the base how I wanted it to be, I then molded a top portion of the tree out with aluminum foil. I, you can't see it from here, but inside I just have a wire uh, frame uh, that helps to hold all of that together. I wanted the tree to lean out over like weeping willows often do lean out over the cemetery and 
you can also see on my board a large square that's etched out that is for the mausoleum i'll tell you why i needed a mausoleum in a little bit and then the smaller square is actually for scrooge's grave now once you have the tree in a shape that you want it to be then use a hot glue gun to run up and down across your tree and that will fill in a lot of the gaps of the tape but it'll also enhance that that bark look to your tree trunk and your branches. I use quite a few sticks of hot glue usually on this particular step. It also helped me to uh, etch out my root system a little bit better. Now there's a lot to unpack on this particular picture and I'm gonna apologize right up front. I'm very lousy about remembering to videotape what I'm doing and all of a sudden I'll go oh hey I probably should take a picture of this and then I'll take a picture here on the tree you can see that uh, I have painted it the way I do that is I spray paint my tree completely black and that gets all the nooks and crannies uh, shadowy on your bark and then I go over it with a couple of different layers of brown paint. Now here I've really got just the, uh, the lighter layer on. Uh, later on I think I do put on a darker layer and a darker layer. And then I do a lot of dry brushing to add a little bit more texture to it all. Now the branches, you can actually see the, what amounted to a failed attempt at a weeping willow for me but it ultimately worked out for the best. So I just didn't know how to get that drooping look to the branches. And so what I had done is I had taken some twine apart uh, and then I, I, I put um, PVA glue onto the twine and hung it out on a piece of PVC for it to dry and become uh, very stiff like a branch would be. And then I again use PVA glue to, um, to get uh, just essentially what it is, is it's modeling grass, uh, the little flecks to adhere to my branches. But it became very apparent to me that I was going to need hundreds and hundreds of these things to make it look realistic. So the next step that I took to fill my tree out a little bit is I took like small modeling trees or bushes or uh, just branches, whatever you want to call them. I was able to buy that at the hobby store, but they're just little short tree like bushes and I hung them upside down and hot glued them to the individual uh, branches that I had already made. So in this picture, what you can see I'm doing is I'm using a little a sharp tool to poke a hole into the branch. From there, what I'll do is um, is take that little tree bush and stick it into the hole and then hot glue it in place. Now I've taken more um, model train terrain uh, bushes, basically uh, they're, they're sponges painted green. Uh, and then I hot glued those to my branches to really fill the tree out. And then you can see the drooping branches now come down off of that. Now it's actually starting to look more like a weeping willow. I have now filled out every one of those drooping branches with other plant material and then trim them off as needed to kind of shape the tree the way I wanted. I didn't want it to go all the way to the bottom because I wanted you to be able to see behind it. Now, also you can see off on the uh, lower um, corner of the screen, Scrooge's grave is starting to take place. I 3D printed a headstone for him and then uh, built out of a piece of scrap foam the mound of dirt surrounding the grave. And uh, so I just used my hot, uh, my hot wire to, to uh, carve that foam. So it kind of sort of looked a little bit like uh, a dirt mound. 
and then put my headstone in place. The next stage was to make the walls of Scrooge's sitting room. Now, had I to do this over again, I would have made this out of foam instead of plywood. That way I could have run all my wires through the foam and then put plywood on the back of the foam to hide everything. As it was, I made the wall out of plywood, then I had to put the foam behind it, run my wires, and then sandwich it in with another piece of foam to hide all the wires. So in this picture, you can see the print that I used for Scrooge's ceiling tiles. It's actually a kitchen tile print, but I thought it would work well for tin type roof. Um, I could have probably made it look a little bit more like tin, but I didn't. Uh, once I printed this out, cut it out into shape, then I glued it to the piece of plywood. And then over there on the upper uh, right hand corner there, you can see what is going to be the piece of plywood that the fireplace sits on. So here's the wall that the fireplace sits on. As you can see, the fireplace sits up on it nice and flush now that I've cut that hole into the wood. Here are some other parts that I have uh, printed out. This is a 3D printed fireplace. Again, found that on Thingiverse. And also, if you look on there, I found a 3D printable head for Jacob Marley that I printed out in a very small format and then painted him up, gave him a bluish cast so that he's a ghost and glued that on there. Then over here on Thingiverse, I found this little flame and I 3D printed that out, painted it in, glued it in place. It works perfectly with this uh, fireplace. I want to integrate not just the Ghosts of Christmas yet, come but also the other three ghosts in the story so in this picture i mocked up how the sitting room is going to end up looking uh, i've already wallpapered the walls i made a a wainscoting that's a very thin sheet of foam that i etched with a little scribe and a ruler and then another even smaller piece of foam laid over it to make the chair rail um, the floorboards that you see are each in, are individually cut pieces of foam that I arranged into a floor pattern and then I ran over it with a wire brush to make the wood grain and then painted it black and then a few different colors of brown to bring up kind of a, uh, a wood tone look to it. Now, I wanted to, in this diorama, I wanted to make sure that I represented all the ghosts, not just the ghost of Christmas yet to come. So here you can see uh, it, the, the table that I made with the candle on it. And like I said, that's representing the ghost of Christmas past. The ghost of Christmas present is actually in this diorama in two places. I figured, hey, he's usually accompanied by a large feast. I made a horn of plenty. Now I sculpted this myself out of, uh, out of Sculpey. Uh, I made a horn of plenty, like as if the ghost left it behind and it's sitting on the mantle. But also on the back wall, you can see a photograph of the ghost of Christmas present uh, framed in a frame that I 3D printed. So that, that came off looking absolutely phenomenal. The, uh, the sconce uh, candles are basically just lights. I turn them upside down so they look more candle-like. If they were turned the proper way, they would look like electrical lights, which Scrooge didn't have at the time. So uh, they were turned upright to make them look like candles. Uh, the chair is painted and put approximately where it's gonna be. Uh, and same thing with the table. I just haven't run the wiring yet. Um, and here you can see I've added another layer of foam to the bottom of it because I just didn't have enough depth to the grave to do the effect that I wanted to do. I actually ended up adding another layer of foam to the bottom of this so that I can get that grave deep enough to to build up the effect that I wanted. So the big surprise for this build was an open grave. 
that would glow with a mist that rises out of it and creeps along the cemetery floor like the angel of death from the Ten Commandments. I didn't think I was going to be able to pull it off until I found Wayne's workshop. Again, not anybody who's supporting me, but this guy makes these little smokers that adds a whole new dimension to your builds. So as near as I can tell, the smoker is based off of a vape pen and he makes a special housing for it, has wired them up for uh, remote control and plug-in operation. They are, there's larger units, there's smaller units. I've got one of each. Uh, for this build, I used the smaller unit, but I needed a place to house the smaller unit. As a result, I had to build a mausoleum. So this is the beginning of my mausoleum build here. But since I wanted the mausoleum to look very gothic, I decided to tackle it in layers. I made the walls first, then I would just add layers onto it that would uh, add in uh, some more depth to it. So here you see I've, uh, I've got the arches put on and then kind of like a little scalloping uh, to the sides. So one of the coolest parts of this build and the hardest to see is the front of the mausoleum. Here you can see me building it again by layers. I started with a base wall, cut the door hole in it, then I put a little backing on that for the door and then there's a um, just a uh, arch for a sandwich kind of um, effect and then a, a thin sheet of foam over the top of that that gives it kind of that alcovey look. Uh, I used a just a hole punch really to make that scalloping. Ultimately the scalloping didn't hold up very well. The foam was just too thin so I had to do something a little different and I'll show that to you in a minute. Again another shot of just basically how I constructed this mausoleum, slowly adding layer upon layer onto it. Now for the angels that guard the mausoleum, I 3D printed those and then made small bases out of foam for them. I textured the foam using a texturing stick. It's basically just a dowel that I put epoxy sculpt on the tips on either side of it and rolled it in various different um, grades of sand so I could get different kind of texture sizes out of it. And once I, once that epoxy sculpt hardened, then I was able to just kind of roll it over the uh, foam and that makes a really nice stony texture. Now for the tips of the towers on the mausoleum, I wanted those to look very gothic and I looked around at different types of uh, mausoleums and a lot of them had this kind of, a, I don't know, scaly look to them. Anyway, I sculpted that out of Sculpey and then painted those to match the mausoleum. Now I had said that the front of my mausoleum didn't quite hold up very well. It was just a little too fragile. So I ended up having to sculpt a, a new front end for it. Now, I thought it looked a little cartoonish. I was kind of bummed about it, but ultimately it doesn't detract that much from the whole mausoleum. So now you can see the front of the mausoleum really start to take shape. The tips are on the towers and I filled in any gaps with some spackling. I, I 3D printed an angel medallion and then surrounded that in Sculpey and sculpted a little fleur-de-lis underneath it. And at the bottom there, you can see my attempt at a uh, wrought iron or uh, a bronze door, I guess you'd say. I um, Basically, it's all made out of a very thin piece of foam that I just use a pencil to etch in the uh, details of it and then painted it all to uh, to look like a actual metal door so ended up looking really actually pretty good I was pretty impressed with it I cut thin strips of foam 
for the roofing material of the mausoleum and then I capped it using uh, Sculpey and then 3D printed this uh, Celtic cross to go at the very top of it. Once I was pretty happy with how the exterior of the mausoleum looked, I then just took a sharp tool and started etching in all my brick lines into the foam. You can also see that I put the steps leading up to the mausoleum door in place. A black base layer of paint really starts to make the whole thing look cohesive. Now it seems counterintuitive, but painting each one of your stones a different color tends to add to the realism. I start by painting each one of my stones a slightly different color and then dry brushing. And you can see I've dry brushed uh, some copper uh, paint uh, and some uh, patina on the tips of my towers as well as the Celtic cross on the top. The uh, angel medallion also got that treatment. And once I have the painting exactly how I want it, then it's time for the black wash. Black wash is basically just a uh, very watered down black paint with maybe some uh, soap added to it, just like a drop or two of soap added into it that, that seems to help it uh, nestle down into all the nooks and crannies better. Went over it with a black wash and you could see how much the thing now looks less cartoony, but a lot more like stone. Once I've done that, then I go over it with a uh, white uh, dry brushing. Um, ah, for lack of a better term, to make it kind of looks like birds pooped on it a little bit. In this picture here, I'm, I'm basically testing out the fit for the mausoleum, how it's going to look with the tree. Uh, I've also put my last final painting on the tree itself. I'm getting ready to put the uh, dirt and uh, and plants down on the ground. I wanted a little bit of ambient mood lighting for this and I was thinking along the lines of like the old uh, time uh, Victorian oil street lamps. Really I could only find ones that were too small or too large. I really wasn't finding ones in the right size. I figured what these Victorians did was in order to light their cemetery they put their oil street lamps or the oil lamps and they basically put them right into the wall. In this way I could really make the lamps to be as tall as I wanted them to be and make them look more realistic to their surroundings. Um, that meant I also had to uh, I had to embed them into a wall. I made the wall out of Sculpey um, and etched uh, little stones to make it like a, a cobblestone or river stone wall uh, with a flagstone top. And uh, then I made it so that the, the street lamps that I bought would fit right there on the top of the flagstones. But I could not bake the Sculpey with the lamps in place. So instead what I did was I left a gap of stones, baked my Sculpey, and then I came back with epoxy sculpt. And I used epoxy sculpt to finish the sculpture for the wall. And that way hiding all my wires for my street lamps. Once that epoxy sculpt was, was solid, now I, had, I could paint it and it just didn't look any different. It looked like one solid river rock wall. Oh, hi, Steve. How you doing up there? This is actually a picture I took for a publicity photo for the hospital I work for. They were highlighting things that nurses do other than be nurses. And of course, I, I build models. In this particular photo, though, you can see that I've got the dirt laid out for the uh, grave and the cemetery. And I'm starting to position my characters along with all my uh, furniture is in place. And it now all functions properly. You can see on the uh, walls, I decided to age them. I figured that there wasn't a lot of good ventilation in Scrooge's house. He burned candles, he burned wood to keep 
warm and it was likely to be very sooty because I didn't see that he was the sort of guy that opened his windows very often. So here you can see the flickering fireplace. I have a little flickering LED behind that fire. Uh, I also etched those stones behind the fireplace. And you see um, Marley's head coming through the fireplace very well and the Horn of Plenty a little bit more detail. Once I had everything in place and how I wanted it, it was time to now clean up the wiring. I, bundled it all up with uh, electrical tape and then uh, etched lines in the foam for the for the wires to nestle inside and then in that way I was able to hide them completely. With all my wires hidden it was now time to install the Castronica smoker. At the base of the grave I installed three LEDs and a diffuser that I bought from Wayne's workshop. Underneath the diffuser is a elbow piece that he also sells along with a tubing that runs down underneath the foam and then comes up behind the mausoleum here and plugs into the smoker. Now I could have gotten the LEDs that go with the smoker and that way it would have uh, when the smoker was turned on, the LEDs would have came on at the same time. I didn't do it that way, but that is an option that Wayne's Workshop does provide is integration with LED and the smoke, which I think is pretty cool. And it's something you should look into if you're going to buy from him. Now from this angle, you can see how I planted the ground plants that uh, live throughout the cemetery. You can also see those street lamps that are integrated right into the stone wall. Now this was a suggestion from my son, who is the one I built this for. He said that the graveyard needed Tiny Tim's grave. Now I took a little poetic license because I know that in the story, Tiny Tim's crutch is actually sitting next to the hearth in the uh, family's house. But I really wanted to drive home whose grave this was. So I made a little cross, a little wooden cross. And again, it's made out of Sculpey and then painted. And next to it, I sculpted a very, very small crutch that would have been Tim's leaning up against it. This is a little bit better view of the front of the mausoleum. You can see the Castronica smoker in the background there that has now been nestled into place with some pieces of foam. But I really liked how the front end of this mausoleum ended up looking. It just looks very organic to me. And um, I, I, I love how weathered those angels look as they look down upon the graves. So once I was finished putting everything together, I put a layer of foam over everything and hid all of my wiring, hid the tubes for the Costronica, painted it all black, and then I put the portion of the, of the original story. I had them printed out on parchment paper and placed them on the front of the diorama to tell you what it's all about. And then, of course, with the uh, with the nameplate there.
Well, I hope you enjoyed my video on the Christmas Carol diorama. If you have any suggestions for me or questions about what I did, uh, please put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Until next time.